Hello to the next episode of the Venture Cafe. We have the lovely Deepti here, who has, with her sister, um, started an interesting company. So I understand that it's a robot that helps inspire kids. Uh, you said uh, in a elementary to high school range, roughly? Yes. Uh, to inspire them to learn how to code yes. on this one. So uh, can you share a little more about this, about this robot? How does it inspire kids? Yeah, thanks, Horst, for inviting me to do this podcast. Um, you know, our uh, mission is really to uh, inspire innovators of tomorrow. Um, and, you know, we all know that robotics is the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's uh, important to teach kids um, early on about mm -hmm. the concepts of science, technology, engineering, mm -hmm. and math, of course, um, of course. STEM uh, concepts, so that they'll not only be able to um, understand how mm -hmm. to uh, interact with technology or even mm -hmm. uh, develop their own technology in the future, mm -hmm. uh, but also it uh, provides them an, uh, a way to mm -hmm. um, develop skills such as problem solving, creativity, mm -hmm. and um, helps them innovate at a young age wow. so that that will develop into something really big. It's, it's amazing. Every generation is smarter than the one before us. And, yes. and uh, standing on, how the people say, we're standing on the shoulders of giants already yeah. on this one. Now, what um, inspired you to, to pick up such a project? Did you have the idea for the robots? So we have been, um, our company, um, mm. Robotics Learning Solutions, we uh, provide robotics education to mm. several um, K through 12 schools in India. And um, we also host um, a national robotics competition mm. called the Indian wow. Robotics League, um, which attracts like 4,000 kids from all over India. Mm -hmm. um, so we have been interested in um, STEM education and mm -hmm. using robotics as a tool because it sort of integrates science, mm -hmm. technology, engineering, and math, mm -hmm. and is just a fun way to um, teach kids the Yeah, because you get concept. to see it, right? Yeah, it's a very hands-on It's not uh, so virtual. Experience. Right. Yeah. And as also there's sort of uh, no denying uh, how excited kids get when they look at a robot <laughs> and play right. with a robot. Um, so that's um, you know one of the main reasons. Um, but you know our robotics program, mm -hmm. we uh, use robot kits from all over the world to um, teach kids, and um, then we started developing our own programmable robots um, mm -hmm. that teach kids in a different way um, how to code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, but but now to you, Dipti. Yeah. Are you an engineer yourself? Um, yeah. So my background is I have an undergraduate in um, in biotechnology. Mm -hmm. um, I have a PhD in neuroscience. Oh wow! Um, so I, my PhD was in learning and memory, mm -hmm. and um, so I've been in um, STEM fields. You right. Know? Um, but I've always been interested in um, technology innovation. Mm -hmm. um, so after my PhD, I uh, joined a neurotechnology mm -hmm. company. Um, it was a startup. What was your inspiration uh, to, to go into that was field? I mean, the, you said you have always been interested in the STEM. Now, combining this one, but what was, what, what was your inspiration? Who was, was there a specific event or person or that, uh, that caused you, that kind of pushed the, you into that direction? Yeah, I mean, I think I I was always interested in biology. Mm -hmm. Why were you always interested in biology? I think I saw the movie. I think it was when I saw, saw the movie Jaws. Oh, wow. I was wow. really interested in sharks, and I wanted mm -hmm. to do a project, I don't know, in seventh grade <laughs> on sharks, and I was obsessively wow. researching everything about, wow. you know, great white sharks and hammerhead mm -hmm. sharks, and it was about observing how mm -hmm. things... Um, yeah, in nature behave mm -hmm. and sort of in a you know in a scientific process mm -hmm. and um, so that um, inspired me that was one of the things that wow. sort of got me excited into it um, when I joined my undergrad I think it was the year that the human genome was scored in 2000 mm -hmm. um, uh, the late 1990s and, uh, um, and there was this big boom for biotechnology and I was mm -hmm. like I want to be part of that I mean it's mm -hmm. so exciting to be right. part of that new innovation in mm -hmm. any um, field and I want to be part of that cutting edge and mm -hmm. that sort of interest has continued I think wow. and um, so then I made a switch after uh, my PhD into the business side of science mm -hmm. and um, you know working on technologies that is sort of a direct application of um, what um, people do in in labs and mm -hmm. uh, you know what they research on and translate that into a product that can be used by people and right. change lives in a positive way. 
Now, uh, another very fascinating is uh, fascinating thing about you is that you know you and your sister. So you have uh, yeah. two woman entrepreneurs picking up uh, a robotics technology, starting a technology company. This is not uh, as common. We like to see that more often happening. Of course, yeah. is uh, to to happen this one. Did you feel that it was um, difficult as a woman to, to lead a company or do you feel like it was easier than expected or was there well, any, did you perceive any gender uh, biases perhaps or problems in, in, your, in, your, in your starting the company? I don't think there was anything blatant that mm. um, stopped us. Mm. I mean, I think that education is a mm. passion for both of us. Mm. Um, that's something that uh, we grew up with. Uh, our parents are also mm. um, very passionate about education. Mm. Um, mm. So, you know, I don't think there were any um, obvious um, mm. sort Let of Let me ask a question. Also, why yeah. do you think that there are so few women business leadership starting up, uh, entrepreneurs starting up a tech company? A tech company. I mean, I think it goes, uh, it starts off with mm. uh, young girls not that much interested in mm. STEM subjects um, because they uh, tend to see it as engineering or technology as, mm. as, a, as a boys field. Mm. Um, and they get, um, how do I say this, um, intimidated by the complex mm. concepts that uh, might be in engineering subjects and, and math. And, mm. um, you know, it's, it's, there are sort of quote unquote role models that almost brag that they are not good at math. So, mm -hmm. you know, young kids look up to people like that and they think that, okay, it's okay to and, say and, I'm and not. And your robot uh, is not changing that, basically. You're trying to change that perception. Yeah, we're, we're trying to change that because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that the big push of STEM education mm -hmm. right uh, right now is teaching kids in a different way um, mm -hmm. so that they will not only be able to enjoy mm -hmm. um, STEM subjects, but also enjoy the process of learning and being mm. able to really um, take ownership of what they're developing mm -hmm. and uh, be able to feel that they have accomplished an end goal um, mm. and, you know, m start from developing it to mm. completing it and something that uh, is a real world application, for mm. example, that they're able to feel that they're making an impact. It's almost like a college uh, degree, mm. but you start something that, right. uh, you know, for a mm. four-year-old. Now talk about your your project right now. At what stage are you in right now with your robot? Yeah, so we are in development. Um, we hope to have our prototype ready by the mm. end of this year. Oh wow! And um, launch it um, mm. early next year. Mm -hmm. So um, we're excited about it. We really want um, you know uh, kids to be excited about mm -hmm. it. More importantly, and um, parents and educators to um, get inspired to. Mm. Um, to use these tools to um, help their kids right. learn in a different way. Yeah. Like, and and you're yourself, you're a mom, right? Yes, I am. Uh, I have a well, two-year-old daughter. Two-year-old, uh, one daughter. Two yes. Daughter, okay. So and then she's uh, she's going to be learning with a robot too, I assume? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. She already knows uh, about uh, robotics in the, at a high level. And oh, that's she loves wonderful. playing with the building blocks, with the Lego mm. building blocks. Um, that's wonderful. So, you know, I'm trying to start early. <laughs> <laughs> now, Deep Tea, if somebody wants to continue the conversation with you, learn more about your robotics, and uh, just want to get a hold of you. Yeah. How can they do that? Yeah, um, anyone can uh, contact me at my email, um, deepti at roboticsedu.com, mm -hmm. or can visit our website, uh, www.roboticsedu.com. Edu? Edu. Edu, yeah. so it's a Robotics with an X. Robotics with an X. Yeah. Uh, so let's spell out the web address again. Robotics? Uh, R O B O T I X E D U okay. dot com. Oh, E D U dot com. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Deep T is spelled D E P T I, is that correct? D E E P as in Pennsylvania. Mm. Thomas I. Okay, yeah. at <laughs> that yeah. website address. Oh, yeah. thank you so much for being on, the, on our Venture Cafe podcast, and I hope you, you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.